welcome to another fish keep in jamaica today i'll be uh, looking at um breeding techniques for tropical fish right i'll be going in detail as to the sexing the breeding the rearing and the differentiation of um the different type of egg um fish that exists within the hobby um familiarize with me all right that, that mean i know about them right i i i don't know everything but i'm just sharing it to you what i know okay um one thing i know is that breeding fish within the aquarium hobby um requires some form of skill right um one of the skill in which uh hobbies should be uh, should have is that of keeping the fish healthy and um, at times it may be challenging but the aquarius or the hobbies is able to distinguish between a healthy fish a sick fish and a male and a female right also the hobbies would also know how to um, stimulate spawning um, for different type of species right for example the the curry catfish if you want the curry catfish to spawn you would keep the curry catfish in some in water that is cool um when i'm breeding my curry catfish i think which i've done about three times since um i've entered seriously within the hobby i've actually placed ice within the water um over a period of time consecutive period of time and they would actually lay the eggs on the glass and i would um take them out and um do the necessary care for the eggs now sexing the fish um is important in knowing whether or not you're you are able to actually um breed the fish that you have right um most fish can be classified as sexually dimorphic or sexually isomorphic right in sexual in sexual in sexually dimorphic species the the sexes can be easily distinguished by primary shape of sex organ and secondary differences such as size shape color sexual um dichromatism and and finish right males are frequently more colorful um larger have more elaborate finish among more brilliant outstanding sexual dimorphism right for example the copy you know the copy um you got the copy male and female right the, the, the coloration of the, the the male tail um so to speak right okay um the Sexual dimorphism, sexual dimorphism um, can be found in um, cichlid, especially Lake Malawi cichlid, right? Um, which include killifish and live bearers. Uh, in sexually isomorphic species, however, there are minute, if any, apparent sexual differences. Often, the only way to distinguish between sexes is the shape of the genital papilla uh, for example oscars and in some cases um jack Dempsey's, right uh which is only visible around spawning time in some isomorphic species the males are slightly larger and the females are slightly rounder in the belly some sexually isomorphic species have no known external sexual differences right no, so in sexing your fish, you have to actually research your fish, know your fish, and you actually can define differentiate the fish um, by virtue of color, size, shape, finish, head, the head, to name a few, right? Um, selecting the parent fish. Now, um, once the males and the females have been distinguished, that means once you have actually single out the male and the female that you're going to actually breed right um there are certain things that is necessary for you to do all right let's let's follow from number one one 
um, choose a fish that display good markings, right? Colors, for example, if you're gonna be cois, right? Um, persons tend to be cois determined by the lineage. You want certain lineage, you want a Japanese real koi, so therefore you'll get certain koi. Because you know, um, you might end up with a mixed breed koi, a koi that is no good, have no value, right? Um, number two, only use mature healthy fish for spawning because unhealthy fish, if they will spawn, may produce unhealthy and deform young. Now, um, points to note koi and goldfish can actually start breeding from as early as six months of existence however the older the fish is the better the spawn the better the quality all right be sure to remember that all right um be sure that the pair is compatible now there are cases where in which you have a male oscar and a female oscar however and you also have a male jack dempsey and a female jack dempsey however for some reason the female does not want to go with that male or the male does not want to go um to that that, that female right many species cannot be put together in breeding tank and expected to get along and produce young right in fact um many aggressive cichlids it is advised that you, you put them in a tank with several of them for example if you want the oscar to actually pair up right you want male and a female to actually start breed it would be best if you buy like four or five or six of them um from there very small and you put them into a pond or a tank by themselves and they will actually um select their partners and it works out best that way right many species cannot be put together in breeding tanks and expected to get along to produce young because um they like to form their own i call it now they would like to choose their own um peers right one partner might bully the other to death and and the other one might be too submissive so therefore there's no there's no um i call it no gelling of the two avoid cross different uh, avoid cross breeding um i've had cases where goldfish and and, and koi have actually bred right but the, but the thing is that when the goldfish and the koi actually cross breed you end up get a fish that is infertile it can't breed any it can't breed meaning that it can't lay eggs or um produce mint that will actually produce um young ones right and they might just look really ugly um number five and the last thing that you need to know when you're, when you're selecting the fish to be bred is that make sure that the fish um of both species are not sterile or hybrid with some cichlids and killifish females different species may look similar but they are different similar to what i'm telling you with regards to the koi right so you want to breed fish that makes sense that you, you don't want to spend two years of your life rearing a fish and when you're ready let's let's say you're ready to, to sell it or you're ready to put it exhibit right you, you realize that the fish is no good the majority of the aquarium fish are egg laying fish right with external fertilization that means the fish actually lay the eggs and the, that's a female fish lay the eggs right and the male actually spray the mint over the eggs um uh, which allows the eggs to be fertilized right now um egg layers you have you have different categories of egg layers right you have egg scatterers egg depositors egg buriers mouth brewers ne um nesters i will share with you as i go along example of all right now egg scatterers these species of fish right they scattered their um adhesive or non-adhesive eggs to fall to the substrate now when i first started this when i first started this video the primary objective was to share with you the fact that some eggs actually float while some actually sink right um but in doing further research i realized that 
the whole idea of eggs being um i call it now laid by fish um goes deeper than just sinking and floating thus i have researched and i have discovered several other things in which i'd never know before to tell you the truth right now um the egg scatterers do not look after their brood and even eat their own eggs these often schooling fish may, sh may spawn in groups or in pairs. Now, example of this fish is the other barbs, like the tiger, tiger barb, the black skirt tetra, the um, filament barbs, right? The ponder barbs. These are excatorers, right? I have had filament barbs that have actually laid over 500 eggs. And I had to remove the parents because I know that the parents would have actually at the eggs right these these species deposit their eggs on substrate such as glass um that's for example the the the, the, the curry catfish right and um wood rocks plants right um egg depositors usually lay eggs lay less eggs right um than egg scatterers right although the eggs are larger egg depositors fall into two groups those that care for their eggs and those that do not care among the, the egg depositors that care for their eggs are cichlids and some catfish now i know for a fact that the piscus and the curry catfish they don't care for their the eggs right they actually eat the eggs and after a couple of minutes not even many seconds of them laying it right egg depositors that care for their egg, young ones or uh, their young can be divided in two groups cavity spawners and open spawners now cavity spawners lay their eggs in caves such as the chromites right while open shelter spawners lay their eggs in open surface these fish form pairs and have advanced brood care where the eggs are defended and clean example the jack dempsey and the oscar the eggs take a few days to hatch and the fries are often guarded by guarded by the parents uh, various catfish and killifish make up a majority of egg depositors that do not care for their young these lay their eggs against a surface where the eggs are abandoned these species do not usually eat their eggs all right however i have witnessed with my own eyes um different and apart from what this research is actually saying my curry catfish actually eating their eggs. As a matter of fact, I've seen my curry catfish catch one of the fries and half of it was down the throat when I actually spotted it, right? And it was eating the fry, right? They call it wrigglers, right? Egg barriers. These species usually inhabit waters that dry up uh, at some time of the year. The majority of egg barriers are annual killifish which lay their eggs in mud the parents mature very quickly and lay their eggs before dying when the water dries up the eggs remain in a dormant state until rain stimulate hatching i don't know i don't know if pleco can be categorized as this because i know that pleco, pleco actually lay the eggs in um in caves right and they also love mud so i um i'm gonna have to check out that one to ensure that I'm speaking the correct um, information. Now, more brewers, point blank, I know. Menganos are, are one of those, right? They will, um, the, the female mangano will, will hold the fish, sorry, will hold the egg in its mouth for up to two weeks. And during that period of time, it doesn't eat none at all. It just sits at the bottom of the tank and wait on the fries to hatch. And it also protects its young. No, mock brewers are species that carry their eggs or larvae in their mouth and can be broken up into other fields and larva fleas. Now, um, egg loving mock brewers lay their eggs in a pit which are sucked up 
into the mouth of the female. Um, you know, earlier on I said that the earlier on I said that the chromides would be a cave, a cave um fish, a fish that lays eggs in a cave. But I think I would put it in a in a mouth brewer because although I see several holes dug into my chromide um fish pond um substrate, right? I know for a fact that the babies are kept in the mouth, are taken in the mouth by the fish at times and carried down into the nest where it actually forces it to stay at times. After observation, I realized that the small a small number of large eggs hatch in the mother's mouth and the flies remain there for a period of time. Fertilization often occurs when the help of the eggs um spots and the color spots on the inner fin of the male now you usually find this in like the peacock right and the manganos you know those little three little thing at the tail at the fin at the back fin right those three dots actually um is there for the fish to actually practice the whole idea of collecting the eggs in its mouth right when the female sees these spots she tries to pick up the eggs right but instead gets a mouthful of sperm right fertilizing the egg in her mouth um many cichlids and some labyrinth fish are over fill filly mouth brewers right and they lay their eggs on substrate and guard them until the eggs hatch after hatching the females spit them up pick up the fry and keep them in her mouth when the fry can fend for themselves they release them and um some earth earth eaters are mouth brewers right nest builders right now these are fish that actually build nests right nest builder some sort of nest for they, they build some sort of nest for the eggs right um the nest is usually in the form of bubble nest which fish can think about that of course the fish we call the fighter fish or the beta fish right which plant with plant debris saliva coated bubbles right uh another fish such uh, like such as the um the some catfish right uh it might end up and, and some cichlids too it might have end up with an excavated um substrate right nest builders practice brood care that means they, they actually care for the the young now with the beta fish after the female actually lays the egg and the male fertilize the egg right the female fish has to remove itself from the egg or you have to remove the egg sorry move the the fish from that tank always the male in caring for the young will end up beat the female to death now i'm i'm, I'm ending I, I, so get the last part live bearers are fish that bear live young right there are two types of live bearers right one where the eggs form and hatch within the female before birth and two where no eggs are formed and the young are nourished through an umbilical like cord or uh, from a secretion from the by the female live bearers are often prolific easily bred such as guppies Sortail, mollies, rosebud, right? I think rosebud, yeah, right? Okay, um, so this is part one. I'll get back to part two where I'll be looking at the condition of the fish, the spawning tank, and other interesting areas such as this stimulating spawning, rearing tank, raising the fry okay thank you for making a fish keep in jamaica stay tuned for the next part part two bye bye